Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the studio. This video will be a little bit different from what you're used to seeing. Today I'll be sharing with you an interview I did with one of my patrons, Ryan Kane. Ryan is an artist studying in university and this interview was part of a project they had at school where they were asked to interview a professional artist, which I suppose I am or am supposed to be, at least. You can find Ryan's Instagram in the description below, give him a follow and thank him for doing this interview. Let me speak briefly on the footage you'll be seeing in the background while the interview runs. You're watching me sculpt on my sculpture Kronos at 10 times speed. Previously I've showed the progress on this sculpture at regular speeds with a Q&A, but progress is very slow on such a large piece and I've already worked over 30 sessions and there's likely more than 100 or more sessions to go. And I think 100 plus Q&As are a little excessive. This is footage from around 8 sessions, session 8 to 16. If you are interested in seeing what came before we got to this point, you can find session 1 to 7 on my YouTube channel. Just search for Q&A. So what to do with the rest of the footage I have of this process on this sculpture? I think perhaps live Q&As on YouTube would be very interesting. Live streamed Q&As with edited footage like you're watching right now, playing in the background while I take your live questions and or talk about what's going on in the video. Do let me know your thoughts on the idea of live Q&As in the comments below. On to the interview with Ryan. So I guess like the first thing is just to like introduce yourself, how long have you been sculpting for and early on in that process, um, what was sculpting like for you? Like think about resources um, and how did you use them? Yes. So I guess I can just fire off with, what is it called? name and and all that sort of stuff so my name is uh Eirik Arnesen. i have been i'm from norway oslo norway and i've been sculpting for since i've been sculpting since around 2011 at the end of 2010 uh, i was in college in art college and we had a project where it was essentially do something with the human body that was kind of the theme and uh and it was very kind of open to interpretation you did whatever you wanted and i'd figured I tried painting, I tried some drawing, I've tried a bunch of different things this first semester. So I gave sculpture a shot uh, at that point and, you know, sculpted this little half life size uh, torso figure. And turned out, I mean, probably didn't turn out that well, but I had a lot of fun doing it essentially, right? And one thing that I think kind of um, that worked really well for me and, and probably why. Um, sculpture what is it called like it uh, like it spoke to me in a way right because with drawing and painting there's a lot of kind of there's a lot of magic needing to happen a lot of illusion needing to happen and those things can be a little bit untransparent if you are to the uninitiated and i wasn't we weren't really being taught very much uh, as far as uh, technique goes so it was kind of like just trial and error but with sculpture you get this kind of object in front of you pretty fast and uh you know, by the virtue of it being in real space or existing in real space, um, you have already have form turning, you already have like dimension to it. It doesn't appear flat usually. So you have all these things already happening for you. And that's always, uh, I think, I think that's why it seemed probably more successful to me than what it was. And that kind of gave me the impetus to chase after it a little bit more. I think just the fact that, you know, this first sculpture seemed to turn out as something and, uh, you know, that kind of sparked a little bit of fire and then you go after it and uh, then you're kind of off to the races. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. I, I kind of relate in a way, at least in the past past couple of years where I was mainly focusing a lot on painting and then the like reintroduction of clay and like working in three dimensions was something that like it just felt more satisfying in a way because you could, yeah, like what you're talking about. Um, it presents itself in a different way that isn't very like, illusionary. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm not entirely sure if it was necessarily like ultimately I was having more success sculpting than I was having painting yeah. and drawing, but it kind of, I don't know, there was like a different feeling there that I got from it that mm -hmm. uh, probably felt more successful than what it ultimately right. was. And that's kind of why, I mean, I think that's kind of what you need, right? Like if, mm -hmm. if you get a few wins under your belt, then you're kind of good to go. You got a little bit of confidence. Now you're going after something. Um, and I think that's how like that and every other project that that 
sculpture kind of worked within that I could do at that school, I did. Um, but let me go back just like a little bit. So how I even kind of got into the arts at all. I, I was always like drawing, drawing and painting a lot when I was a kid, uh, maybe up until I was, let's say 10, 11. I was always drawing and nothing but kind of like spectacular, just for fun with, with no sort of consequence, no classes or anything like that. It was just like a fun thing that we did, me and my friends. And I think around maybe when we were 10 or 11, uh, we started getting into Warhammer and, uh, you know, the Warhammer, like the tabletop game with the miniatures and those you have to build and paint. And so that kind of took over from drawing and painting was building miniatures, model airplanes and stuff like that and painting them. Uh, but then at some point you become a teenager and that stops being cool, uh, which it really did. And uh, but I still kind of liked it. But, you know, I followed along with everyone else and kind of stopped doing that for a few years. And I think maybe when I was 17 or something, I, I was like, screw it. I'm done being cool. I'm just going to do what I want to do. So I got back into it. Um, I did that for a few years and that kind of that's kind of how I started getting into finding online resources. Um, at that time, you know, YouTube certainly was a thing, but th there was mostly just like, if I remember correctly, I never watched like a YouTube tutorial on anything back then. It was mostly just like cat videos or people yeah. getting hurt or stuff like <laughs> exactly. that, um, which was a lot of fun, but, you know, not very educational. <laughs> so I went to this, I found this website called Miniature Mentor, and I don't know if they're still around, but they had painting tutorials. And at some point they had like some sculpting tutorials because people obviously hand make these small miniatures. And I watched some of those sculpting tutorials and was kind of like, oh, that's cool. And started, you know, changing up my own miniatures, like adding hair and stuff like that. So I suppose that's kind of my first sculpting experience, really. And then that once I got into uh, art college, that kind of transitioned into that first project uh, or deciding to even try that first project. 